informational meeting uh, by the planning and endowment committee so thursday evening we'll have a special guest speaker christy born from hearth hospice okay you can sign me up i guess so you'll need to uh, indicate that you'd like to come please call the church office by wednesday okay that sounds great all right you ready for the call to worship yes let's call to worship all right we are so happy that you all are here this morning, and I look forward to this time of worship together. Let's continue to prepare our hearts with this call to worship. Lord, we come into your house with thankful hearts because you are a good, good God. Jesus, our Savior, help us to open our hearts to you, forgive our sins, and draw us close. Holy Spirit, we ask you to fill our hearts and fill this place with your joy and peace. Thank you for this gathering of people who praise you together. Be, Be praised, praised and honored in, in all, all we, we do. do. Amen. Amen. It's my pleasure to introduce our chancel choir and Mr. Roy Trayer for Through It All.
me, to forget to turn the microphone on, doing things a little differently today. We'll be having our children's message down here. If the kids want to come over, and I'll say if you know the songs and you want to sing, feel free to sing with us. But if you don't, that's okay. I love it. It looks so good. First day of October, and we got a pumpkin dress. That's awesome. Hey, girl. Thanks for coming down. We're going to sing a couple songs, and then Miss Deanne's going to have a Bible lesson for us, and then we'll sing one more at the end where we can kind of get up and dance around. How about that? Yeah? Where's go where it starts? Twinkle, twinkle. That is a good one. One of the all-time classics. This one's kind of like that, though. It's this little light of mine. So if you know it, feel free to sing along. Y'all sound great. You like that song? Yeah. I know. You know. I know a number of you guys like this one, too. Children's Chapel love this one. I know you guys like it, too. So feel free to sing along with this one as well. This one's a little bit of a calmer song, so we can all be calm, pay good attention to Miss Deanne and her story here in a minute. Then I promise we'll do something exciting we can dance to in just a second.
guys so much for joining me. Y'all sound beautiful lifting your voices together. Uh, I'm excited because Miss DM has a Bible lesson for us. So I, I'm, I'm going to keep my hands in my lap and sit quietly and pay good attention. And then we'll get up and we'll, we'll dance to the last song. And girls, I am so excited to see you. And whether you have been here every week or this is your first time, I am so excited that you are here and that your mommies and daddies are here. I am so excited. Do you know what we have going on behind us? Does anybody know what this is? What's this called? What's this stuff up here called? Anybody know? Sadie. Communion. Okay, now someone besides Sadie, tell me what communion is about. Anybody know? Do you know? Okay, well, there's juice, there's grape juice in here, and there's bread over here. Was that a hint? You're what? Okay, awesome. Okay, anybody else have an idea? What's the body stand for? Okay. Okay, the, okay go ahead, Jericho. The, bo the bread is the what? The body of who? Jesus. Okay, very good. And the grape juice? The blood of Jesus. Excellent, Jericho and Tady. Thank you very much. Well, today is not just communion here at our church. It's communion all around the world. And if I can have some of those pictures up that I've I put. I, yes, perfect. Okay, see that picture up there? That's a picture of a of a church in uh, Africa. Now, how does that church look different than our church? They're having it where? Outside, yeah. Did you know you can have church outside? Oh, that's pretty cool, isn't it? Okay, next picture. Okay, now, do these people look like us? No, not exactly, but they're having communion. See, they have their hands out. They're ready for what God has for them. Okay, next picture. Ah, and there's boys and girls just like you. And they're getting communion also. They're ready for it. Did you know that in the United Methodist Church that you can have communion no matter who you are because it's all to remember the grace to honor and to celebrate Jesus. And God gives us grace. Now, when I was your age, I thought it was just about having a snack at church. I thought this is a really nice snack. But did you know that it's exactly what Jericho and Sadie told us? It reminds us of what Jesus did for us and that he went to the cross and died for us and died for our sins. Well, another thing I have for you today is this dress. Now, this dress came from Egypt when Pastor Brian and I went to Egypt, okay? So there are people all around the world celebrating communion. Um, has anybody ever been to a foreign country? Has anybody ever been to another country? Yes? Go ahead. Where? Do you A country, another country. I'll give you a hint, like Canada or Mexico. Okay, what about you, Jericho? Okay, to visit your grandparents in another state, okay. Well, this mask I got a long time ago, and it's from Mexico. And did you know that there are, oh, and I also have moose earrings because we went to Canada. Pastor Brian and I went to Canada for two days. Have you seen a moose? Well, that's pretty cool. That's another country, okay. Yeah, and there are lots of other countries. And Miss Deanne has a missionary friend that was uh, in Bolivia in South America. And uh, let me see this globe that Sadie's mom. Bolivia is right here in South America, below North America. And then I have another friend that's a missionary in Slovakia. And Slovakia is over here um, in Eastern Europe. Uh, if I got that wrong, don't. 
anyway, I have dear missionary friends, okay? So all around the world, Christians are celebrating communion. And you all get to do that to, with us today. And we are celebrating you. If you are sitting up here, we are celebrating you. And guess what? After we pray, Miss Deanne has something for me. So you sweet little girls that haven't come up, this would be a good time because Miss Deanne has something fun. Okay, dear Jesus, thank you for this day. Thank you for all these boys and girls and the parents that are represented. We thank you for each one, and we thank you for the chance to remember you and all you've done for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, come here, guys. Thank you guys. Thank you guys for being here. So, sort of like we do in chapel on Wednesdays, if you guys want to get up and dance a little bit and move around to this last one. Yes, I think, I, I think it is just, it is right and just to be exuberant in church. It's a way of giving thanks. I would give that thanks myself. I knew it was a mistake to sit on the ground before I touched the ground. That was, that was a bad call today. You do? All right. All right. If you want to sing, feel free to sing. If you want to dance around a little bit, dance around. Let's just be careful not to bump each other, all right? Well, I am a pilgrim and a stranger traveling through this wearsome land. Well, I've got a that Thank you guys so much for being here and thank Miss Deanne for that lesson. Now, by, as you all are being seated this time, I just want to give you a heads up here. This is what we do every Wednesday here, a part of our CDC. Our CDC is almost 60 years old, and this is what we do every Wednesday with our CDC. And they have a lot of fun, and we wanted you to experience a little bit of that fun today. John Coniglio, you videoed them this week. And somewhere in cyberspace is a video of that. When we find it, when we get it back out of cyberspace, we'll post it on Facebook, okay? Because I want people to see how much fun they have in this church, okay? Now, as we get ready for prayer, I thought I'd tell you a little story. This comes from the mountains of North Carolina. There was a man named Jack. Jack didn't have a job. It had been a long time since Jack had a job. But every day, he went out looking for work. 
And he went up and down the roads looking for work. And one day, while he was out looking for work, he ran into a very unusual man. The guy said, I, Jack, I know I'm unusual, but I am a wish giver. Yes, I can grant one wish for you. And I'd like you to come back tomorrow with one wish you'd like to ask. Now, don't be asking all your wishes come true. Don't be asking for more wishes. That doesn't work that way. You get one wish. So go home, think about it, and I'll make your wish come true. Well, Jack went home. And as he's walking home, he says, I've been out of work a long time. It would be nice to have some gold. If I had gold and I, we ran out of work, I could still have some money. We wouldn't be poor. We wouldn't be hurting so much. If I had gold, it would solve a lot of problems. We came in through the door of his house and he looked at his wife and said, Honey, I met a wish giver and he's going to give me one wish, make it come true. I want to wish for money. And his wife looked at him for a few minutes and said, Honey, that would be great. I would, it would be fun to be rich. But you know, Jack, we don't have any children. Jack, could you use your wish to wish that we would have a child? Could you wish for us a child, Jack? At this point, his mother-in-law, who lived with Jack and his wife, spoke up, and she had gotten to the point, her old age had taken her vision and dimmed it so much that she was now blind. And she said, oh, Jack, oh, Jack, would you just grant one wish for me? Could you let me see you again? That night, Jack went to sleep. He was turning and tossing and tur tossing and turning and turning and tossing and tossing and turning, trying to say, what am I going to do? And he said, it would be great to have gold. It would solve a lot of problems for us. But my wife is right. We don't have any children, and I really would like to have a child. And my mother-in-law, if I was blind, I would like to see. He says, what am I going to do? And he was tossing and turning and turning and tossing. And all of a sudden, he had an idea. He thought about it for several minutes, got it completely in his mind, and rolled over and went to sleep really well. The next morning, he got up, he went out, and he found the wish giver. And the wish giver said, Jack, do you have your wish? Oh, I do, I do, I do, I'm ready. Okay, let me hear it. I wish that my mother-in-law could see my child eat off gold plates every day. <laughs> now, could we pray like that today? Could we pray believing our God can take care of all our needs? Lord Jesus Christ, we give you thanks for this day. Lord, would you come you call us to love you with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. Lord, would you do that for us right now and help us love you like that. And Lord, as you do, help us to have the faith to believe that all things are possible for you in all generations. And today as we celebrate children, we celebrate people of all ages who come before you and say, yes, Lord, I will follow you wherever. Amen. I understand that we now have a video that we can share with you from the CDC. We hope you enjoy it.
morning. The uh, first scripture is from Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 through 3. The Lord had said to Abram, Go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you I will curse, and all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. You may be seated. During this time of worship, we come to consider our giving to the Lord. And we are in the home stretch on our 28 days of prayer. So I just want to encourage you to keep going. God is working and moving. And uh, please continue to be in prayer, uh, especially these next seven days. As we consider our giving to the Lord, we consider how he would have us use our time, our gifts, and our talents, as well as our finances. If you are able and strong enough, you feel that you could perhaps volunteer working with children or taking a Sunday in the nursery, that would be a really great way to use your talents and your abilities for the Lord. And there's a need there now. So let us go to the Lord in prayer, ask for his guidance and his blessing on our giving this morning. Will you pray with me? Lord God, you are the giver, the one that teaches us what it means to give, to give unselfishly, to give generously. Lord, you are good and gracious and loving. We're so very thankful for all the ways that you have blessed us in our lives. Financially, you have blessed us with family and friends. You've given us of your spirit and gifts to serve you and the grace to serve you. Would you, Lord, continue to guide us? Would you give us courage to step into new areas of service where we might not have served before, knowing that you promise to empower us with your dunamis, dynamite power through the Holy Spirit within us? Lord God, as we bring our financial gifts today, would you bless these and multiply them? Use them to spread the knowledge of your love throughout this world until all have heard the good news of your saving help through Jesus. It is in his name that we pray. Amen. Jesus on the main line, tell him what you want. 
Jesus on the main line, tell him what you want. Jesus on the main line, tell him what you want. Call him up and tell him what you want. If you are in trouble, tell him what you want. If you are in trouble, tell him what you want. If you are in trouble, tell him what you want. Call him up and tell him what you want. Call him up and tell him what you want. Call him up and tell him what you want. Please rise as you're able and join us on page 94 of your hymnal for our doxology, Praise God, from whom all blessings flow. God from whom all blessings flow, praise God all creatures here below, hallelujah, hallelujah, praise God the source of all our gifts, praise Jesus Christ whose power uplifts, praise the Spirit, Holy Spirit, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Actually, my bad. Please remain standing for the reading of Scripture. The second reading comes from Revelation 7, 9 through 12. After this I looked, and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, tribe, people, and language, standing before the throne and before the Lamb. They were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands, and they cried out in a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne, and to the Lamb. All the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. They fell down on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, saying, Amen, praise and glory and wisdom and thanks and honor and power and strength be to our God forever and ever. Amen. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. <laughs> okay. Thank you all for an amazing worship service. It's good to be with you guys this morning. It really is. I'm going to try this side of the stage out to see what it looks like. I want to get closer to the kids. There you go. Yeah. Let me get out of your way. Thank you. If you travel to Stone Mountain, Georgia, and you feel a little energetic, you'll probably take the one-mile hike from the, up 700 feet up that mountain so you can stand on top of the mountain and look out over all that area. It's a fun hike. It is all uphill unless you're coming back down. Now, I've always been intrigued when I travel different places, how many different languages you hear. Now, I have discovered that no matter what language you speak, panting sounds the same. <laughs> but I have been on Stone Mountain and heard all sorts of different languages spoken. And several years ago, Dee and I were celebrating our 10th wedding anniversary, and we were at Stone Mountain. We scraped together every penny we had and went on the horseback carriage ride through all the Christmas lights and spent the night there. It was a great evening. The next morning, we were going to back to pick up our kids and come back to reality, and we realized we needed a couple of things from the store. And we stopped at an old Kmart. Now, there was something different about this place. We were four days until Christmas, and everywhere we were hearing, we were, we were singing all the, dreaming of white Christmas, I'll be home for Christmas, all that sort of stuff. And there is some guy up there rapping Christmas songs. I have never heard him rap as well as I did that day. And he was in a Santa suit, and he is rapping and dancing to Christmas songs. 
and he was black. It was the first time I'd ever spotted a black Santa Claus. And it made me think, perhaps, just perhaps, there's a bigger world out there. And that we can be a blessing to others and take whatever we have in whatever form we are and go and bless somebody else. The scripture reading we got today from Genesis it's, uh, this is a marvelous passage, and we could spend hours going through it. I'm just going to take a couple minutes with you. You see, Genesis 12, 1 to 3 is the call of Abraham. Now, did you get in there? Abraham only has to do one thing. Leave. Leave your, leave your family. Leave this place. Leave your kindred. Leave. It's all you have to do, Abraham. And in response, seven times, God says, I will. I will do this. I will do this. I will do this. Now, if you got a seven to one return on any investment, you all would jump at it, wouldn't you? And all Abraham has to do is leave, and he does. Of the seven I wills there, the last one says, I will make you will be a blessing to others. Because of who you are, you will bless others. Just to make sure you get it, it shows up two more times in Genesis and twice in the New Testament. This exact same phrase saying, Abraham, Abraham. That's right. You will get to bless other people because of who you are. You will get to bless other people because of who you are. Today is dynamite prayer devotion talks about does anybody know you about your faith because of what you do are you being a blessing to somebody else are you doing so much around you that say someone says this person believes in Jesus you see my Santa Claus I saw that day took up the idea that Santa is for all people and Santa doesn't just sing Bing Crosby Santa can rap and Santa has moves and Santa brings joy in any language I share that today to think about with you if we could still be a blessing to somebody else today could we be a blessing to somebody else now I want to share with you also from the book of Revelation before I get there let me give you a little background if you go to Jerusalem there is a massive church there it was actually a bunch of massive churches there but the most holy site for Christians is the church of the Holy Sepulchre or also called the church of the resurrection and it holds two sites one is the place we believe where Jesus the cross stood and you can go in and kneel down underneath the altar and touch the ground there and there's also you can go down a whole series of steps and you can go to the cave the empty tomb where Jesus was buried now to get there you need to have a guide because guess what it's not all this major road going through there's lots of little tiny roads usually you go down the Viva Della Rosa just the same way Jesus did and you get your guide to get you the little side door of the church the Holy Sepulchre and once you get there you get in line now you're about to discover when you get in line it's just like Disney the line inside is three times larger than the line outside now I don't know what you do when you get in line but a bunch of us from South southern Appalachia got in line and we checked our phones saw if we had any messages made sure our camera was clean chit chatted and basically put on the attitude we're bored oh come on oh we moved forward a foot yahoo we're bored now we are about to go see the place where Jesus died we are about to see the empty tomb and we're bored there is something wrong with that, isn't it? The good news was in front of us, about two or three groups in front of us, there was another group 
who realized that this was a sacred place and they were singing and dancing for joy. You know, after a while we kind of figured out who they were. They were a group from Albania. I know we as Christians bemoan everything that happened in 2020 and how it ruined the church. Albania for 24 years, if you lived in that country, you are not allowed to have any public or private expression of faith. And yet the church came back and they're now 500,000 Albanian Christians, 20% of the country. And I think the reason they have grown so much in spite of all that's happened is they could still stand in line and they can dance for Jesus. And they realize there's something important they're about to go see. The problem is, I know, we kind of get, oh yeah, that's going to be in heaven. We'll get that great multitude in Revelation 20 and in Revelation 7 and we'll just, we'll, we'll do our singing and dancing then, preacher. Right now, I like to sit. I get that. Sitting's easier on my knees. But I started thinking. Well, first off, I had a little sidebar question myself. It said a great multitude. I don't like vague numbers. Give me a real number. I want to know, is there 1,263,000 there? Or how many people are really in heaven, Jesus? I want to know if there's a place for me. Am I going to get there? Now, there's a little small issue. And the reason I think that part, one reason that we don't have an accurate number is, you remember Roman numerals? You all learned them in third grade and said, praise God. The only time you use them since is a Super Bowl to figure out which Super Bowl you're watching. The maximum number, if you use ordinary uh, Roman numerals, is 3,999. I'm hoping there's more than that many people in heaven. Now, they have, the Roman scholars put together some different ways to get bigger numbers, but still, it's a complicated way. And the same method of counting and using letters for numbers is used also in the Greek alphabet and the Hebrew alphabet. And so there's these limitations on how big you can get. In fact, the Bible's, the largest number in the Bible is in 2 Chronicles, and it says a million. Well, actually, the Hebrew says a thousand thousands. Just to check your math out there, see if you can remember how, how a million is a thousand thousands. So I like the word gobs of people. Or I think about McDonald's hamburgers. There are billions and billions of those things sold, Right. They quit counting in 1994 when they hit 99 billion. It's kind of like the federal, I ha, I've been trying to figure out how much money the federal budget is this week. All I keep hearing is trillions or somewhere between a one trillion, a four trillion, a six trillion. It doesn't matter. It's a number too big for me. And that's what God says. That's what heaven's like. It's a number too big to count. But if we ask the question of how many, we've lost the question because there's a better question to ask. It's not how many are in heaven, but what are they doing? They are praising God for their what? For their salvation. They have said, this is what it's all about. We have been saved by the act of God. And we are changed because of that forevermore. You see, those Albanian Christians still remembered something. They remembered that they were saved. And they can probably remember the time and the place where they accepted Christ. For some of us, it's been too many decades, and we've forgotten what it's like to remember what it was like to come down and kneel at the altar and say, Lord, bless me indeed, for I have sinned. Today, I leave you with two little thoughts before we go to communion. On this World Communion Sunday, one guy who made up the country of Israel was blessed to be a blessing. Are you called today, actually we know we're called today, to be a blessing for somebody else? And so instead of just praying for ourselves and listening to our own little greed, because I'm greedy too, saying, Lord, bless me, could God be saying to us, Bless me so that I can bless somebody else. And do we realize the greatest blessing we have of all is that we have been saved 
forever and forever. Amen. As we prepare for the Lord's Supper, I invite you to join me in our liturgy of the word and table. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And so in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice. In union with Christ's offering for us, as we proclaim the mystery of our faith, Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forevermore. Amen. On the night in which Jesus celebrated Passover with his disciples, the night in which he was also betrayed, he lifted up the bread at the supper, and he broke it, saying to them, this is my body, which is given for you. So take and eat and remember me. After the supper, he lifted up the cup, saying, this cup represents the new covenant I make with the Father on your behalf through the shedding of my blood that you might have forgiveness of sins. So drink from it, all of you, and remember me. Let us pray. Lord God, how we thank you this morning for the giving and the sacrifice of your Son, the Messiah, Jesus, who came to be our Savior. We ask this day that you forgive us of our sins and our thoughts, our words, and our deeds, and grant us the grace, Lord, to do differently from this moment forward. We thank you for the forgiveness offered through Jesus. We thank you for the gift of your Holy Spirit, and we pray that your Spirit would be poured out on this bread and on these cups, that they might minister to us all the benefits of this salvation. Draw us close together with you and in union with one another as we celebrate this meal together. In the name of Jesus, we pray, amen. The good news is that Jesus Christ invites to his table all those who love him, who earnestly seek to turn away from their wrongdoing and to live in peace with one another. So if that is you, I want you to know you are welcome to come this morning and celebrate this meal together. Would those who are helping to serve please come?
here. Otherwise, just follow the ushers as they guide you around. no space that his love can't reach there's no place that we can't find peace there's no end to amazing grace take me in with your arms spread wide take me in like an orphan child never let go never leave my side and I am holding on to you I am holding on to you in the middle of the storm I'm holding on I am love like this oh my God to find I am overwhelmed, what a joy divine. Love like this sets our hearts on fire. And I am holding on to you. I am holding on to you. In the middle of the storm, I'm holding on, I am. I am holding on to you. I am holding on to you. In the middle of the storm, I'm holding on. I am. resurrection song this is my hallelujah come this is why it's to you I run this is my resurrection song this is my hallelujah come this is why it's to you that we can't find peace there's no end to amazing grace and I am holding on to you I am holding on to you in the middle of the storm I'm holding on I am holding on to you I am to you in the middle of the storm I'm holding on I am holding on to you I am holding on to you in the middle of the storm I'm holding on I am and I am in the middle of the storm I'm holding on, I am. Love is resurrection 
song. This is my hallelujah come. This is why it's to you I run. This is my resurrection song. This is my hallelujah come. This is why it's to you I run. My friends, it's been a great day, and God has answered a lot of prayers, and God is not done answering prayers. We're going to have a prayer here for our kids and all those of you who want to go enjoy some pizza and some ice cream. The bouncy house, if you can't get back out, you can't go in. Lord Jesus, thank you for today. You provide everything we need. You've already given us your greatest gift, a chance to, to be with you to take your body and blood and feel your very presence. And Lord, as we leave this place, fill us with the joy of your salvation that we may dance and sing and know that you are alive. Amen. Amen. Let me give you four and then verse three. Out. This is my resurrection song. 
this is my hallelujah come this is why it's to you i run this is my resurrection song this is my